If someone tells you they're better under pressure, they're lying. Michael Jordan, arguably the best performer of all time, shot below his career shooting average in the final minutes of important basketball games. Professional basketball players make 7% fewer free throws in high-pressure situations, like being down one point in the last minute of a game. A Harvard study found that creative teams who work under intense time pressure have significantly more projects rejected by management than teams who report to have less pressure. In the book Performing Under Pressure, authors Hendry Weisinger and Dr. J.P. Palofry show that social pressure to put on a good presentation or time pressure to meet a deadline prevents you from performing at your best. However, if you can learn to see pressure in a new way, you can make yourself essentially immune to the performance-killing effects of pressure. Here are three ways to think about pressure so that you can perform to your full potential when it matters most. When you get nervous before a high-pressure performance, over 90% of people will tell you to stay calm and try to relax. However, studies show that when a presenter tries to calm down before a presentation, the audience is more likely to describe that presenter as having low confidence and being unpersuasive. If trying to calm down when you're nervous doesn't boost performance, what will? Well, the opposite. When psychologist Adam Grant told students to get excited when they felt nervous, they delivered speeches that were rated 17% more persuasive and 15% more confident than the students who were told to calm down. In another experiment, when students were told to get excited before a big exam, they scored 22% higher than students who were instructed to stay calm. The first mindset that will make you immune to the performance-destroying effects of pressure is to interpret the nervousness you feel under pressure as excitement. When you tell yourself you're getting excited for an upcoming performance, you're scientifically proven to release more adrenaline than noradrenaline, which causes your blood vessels to dilate and your lungs to expand. The result is more oxygen to your brain and increased mental clarity. When you tell yourself, I'm excited to perform, you're essentially injecting yourself with a performance steroid to help fight off the negative effects of pressure. Pressure mindset number two. Imagine you're a famous blogger and you've just received a book contract for $100,000. Your publisher tells you, if you can sell a million copies of this book, the next contract will be worth $1 million. But you need to finish this book in six months. Good luck. Writing a book with a million dollars on the line makes the project seem more intimidating than it needs to be. If you take a second to look past the factors that make the project seem important and break it down, you'll see that writing a book is just like writing a bunch of short blog posts and then putting them together. Not that scary, right? And writing a blog post that you hope a million people will read requires the same amount of effort as writing a blog post you want five friends to read. By taking a second to step back and see the high pressure situation more objectively, you can see it's like a familiar task that's less scary. It's like that scene in The Wizard of Oz. At first, the task in front of you seems scary like the great and powerful Oz. But if you look closely and peek behind the curtain, you find something a lot less intimidating, like the old man pressing the buttons to create special effects. If you're about to write a big exam, tell yourself that it's not much different than writing a practice test. Research shows that sales reps who downplay an important presentation and are told to shoot the breeze with the customer make significantly less mistakes than sales reps who are reminded the presentation is very important. When I started to get more subscribers on this YouTube channel, the thought of making a video for thousands of people made my next video more significant, which increased the pressure to make a good video. But the pressure didn't help. In fact, it increased my procrastination and it made it hard to generate ideas for the video. Once I realized that the performance requirements for making a video for several thousand people is the same as making a video for a few friends. The pressure dissipated, and I could think clearly again. If you want to reduce the creativity killing effects of pressure, adopt the second pressure mindset and compare what you need to do to something that's simpler and less scary. Pressure mindset number three. In the late 1990s, baseball pitcher Greg Maddox was asked by a sports reporter to assess his performance after a winning game. Most baseball pitchers would give a cliched response, like, my fastball was working tonight, or I stayed within myself. However, Maddox gave a rather original response. He told reporters, 73 of 78. Confused, the reporters asked him to clarify. Maddox explained that 73 of his 78 pitches 
left his fingers the way he intended. What happened after the ball left his fingers was irrelevant. Maddox couldn't control whether the batter would hit the ball or whether his team would win the game. So he just focused on what he could control. Being a control freak made Maddox an eight-time all-star. Before giving a speech, I obsessively focus on what I can control. I focus on controlling my breathing, I concentrate on maintaining a confident posture, and I focus on how many times I rehearsed my speech in the past few days. By fixating on the performance factors that I control, I find that I fall into a zone that's free of anxiety, and I forget the severity of the situation. When a professional golfer needs to make a putt for a million dollars in front of thousands of people, they escape the pressure of the moment by executing the pre-shot routine. A pre-shot routine is a series of familiar actions they take before each shot that they have complete control over. When a golfer focuses solely on executing his routine, he can temporarily forget how much is on the line. The third mindset that makes you immune to the adverse effects of pressure is fixating on factors in your control. Now, if you put these three pressure mindsets together, you get three sentences that you can say before every high stakes performance to ensure that you perform as close to your potential as possible. The three sentences are, I'm excited to perform. In a way, it's just like, and then think of something simpler and less important. And I'll just focus on what I can control. That was the core message that I gathered from Performing Under Pressure by authors Henrik Weisinger and Dr. J.P. Palufry. This book contains a ton of science-backed pressure solutions. I highly recommend this book to anyone who feels anxious under pressure. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.